Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. 2 Chronicles chapter 30. Hezekiah sent word to all Israel and to Judah, and he also wrote letters to Ephraim and Manasseh, inviting them to come to the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem and celebrate the Passover to the Lord, the God of Israel. The king and his officials and the whole assembly in Jerusalem decided to celebrate the Passover in the second month. They had not been able to celebrate it at the regular time because not enough priests had consecrated themselves and the people had not assembled in Jerusalem. The plan seemed right both to the king and to the whole assembly. They decided to send a proclamation throughout Israel from Beersheba to Dan, calling the people to come to Jerusalem and celebrate the Passover to the Lord, the God of Israel. It had not been celebrated in large numbers according to what was written. At the king's command, couriers went out through Israel and Judah with letters from the king and from his officials, which read, People of Israel, return to the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel that he may return to you who are left and who have escaped from the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not be like your parents and your fellow Israelites who were unfaithful to the Lord, the God of their ancestors, so that he made them an object of horror as you now see. Do not be stiff-necked as your ancestors were. Submit to the Lord, come to his sanctuary, which he has consecrated forever. Serve the Lord your God, so that his fierce anger will turn away from you. If you return to the Lord, then your fellow Israelites and your children will be shown compassion by their captors and will return to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and compassionate. He will not turn his face from you if you return to him. The couriers went from town to town in Ephraim and Manasseh as far as Zebulun, but the people scorned and ridiculed them. Nevertheless, some from Asher, Manasseh, and Zebulun humbled themselves and went to Jerusalem. Also in Judah, the hand of God was on the priests to give them unity of mind to carry out what the king and his officials had ordered following the word of the Lord. A very large crowd of people assembled in Jerusalem to celebrate the festival of unleavened bread in the second month. They removed the altars in Jerusalem and cleared away the incense altars and threw them into the Kidron Valley. They slaughtered the Passover lamb on the 14th day of the second month. The priests and the Levites were ashamed and consecrated themselves and brought burnt offerings to the temple of the Lord. Then they took up their regular positions as prescribed in the law of Moses, the man of God, The priests splashed against the altar the blood handed to them by the Levites. Since many in the crowd had not consecrated themselves, the Levites had to kill the Passover lambs for all of those who were not ceremonially clean and could not consecrate their lambs to the Lord. Although most of the people who came from Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, and Zebulun had not purified themselves, yet they ate the Passover contrary to what was written. But Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, May the Lord, who is good, pardon everyone who sets their heart on seeking God, the Lord, the God of their ancestors, even if they're not clean according to the rules of the sanctuary. And the Lord heard Hezekiah and healed the people. The Israelites who were present in Jerusalem celebrated the festival of unleavened bread for seven days with great rejoicing, while the Levites and the priests praised the Lord every day with resounding instruments dedicated to the Lord. Hezekiah spoke encouragingly to all of the Levites who showed good understanding of the service of the Lord. For the seven days they ate their assigned portion and offered fellowship offerings and praised the Lord, the God of their ancestors. The whole assembly then agreed to celebrate the festival seven more days. So for another seven days they celebrated joyfully. Hezekiah, king of Judah, provided a thousand bulls and seven thousand sheep and goats for the assembly, 
and the officials provided them with a thousand bulls and ten thousand sheep and goats. A great number of priests consecrated themselves. The entire assembly of Judah rejoiced, along with the priests and the Levites, and all who had assembled from Israel, including the foreigners who had come from Israel, and also those who resided in Judah. There was great joy in Jerusalem, for since the days of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, there had been nothing like this in Jerusalem. The priests and the Levites stood to bless the people, and God heard them, for their prayer reached heaven, his holy dwelling place. So friends, a marvelous chapter. In the midst of Assyria coming and encroaching on the northern kingdom and uh, beginning to attack Israel sporadically, Hezekiah rises up in Judah, and he seeks to reunify the people of Israel and Judah with their God. He's looking for unity in the Lord. He's not looking for political unity. He's encouraging them to once again worship the Lord. So he says, hey, let's celebrate Passover in Jerusalem. And everybody knows Passover is supposed to be celebrated in Jerusalem and not in these other false cities that the northern kingdom has set up. And so he sends out an invitation to all the tribes of Israel and to Judah. And a proclamation goes forth and the couriers travel from town to town and some scoff, but... Some in the northern kingdom humbled themselves and went to Jerusalem. Friends, this is hundreds of years after the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom split up. It's easy to miss how significant it is that the citizens of Israel came to Judah. You know, the original uh, founder of the northern kingdom had set up golden calf worship in the north because he feared his people would go back to Jerusalem to worship the Lord and reunify with the southern kingdom. So this is a huge event. Again, had not occurred in hundreds of years. The Bible says since the time of Solomon. So those who came, many of them were ceremonially unclean. They were not eligible to eat Passover. Let's read this, verse 17. Since many in the crowd had not consecrated themselves, the Levites had to kill the Passover lambs for all those who were not ceremonially clean and could not consecrate their lambs to the Lord. Although most of the people who came from Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, and Zebulun had not purified themselves, yet they ate the Passover contrary to what's written. Now, this is a huge sin. This is a huge omission, a huge error. But remember, the northern kingdom no longer followed uh, the law of Moses with absolute detail. They had mixed idolatry, and they had mixed a a bit of Torah and a bit of this and a bit of that, but they didn't know how to ceremonially uh, present themselves as clean and approved according to the Sinai covenant of Moses. So Hezekiah sees all these people, and he has great joy in his heart that many from Israel have come to Judah to worship the Lord, and he prays this amazing prayer. He, um, he, He notices that they're not sacramentally approved to take Passover, but they're eating it anyway. So he prays and he says, may the Lord who is good pardon everyone who sets their heart on seeking God, the Lord, the God of their ancestors, even if they are not clean according to the rules of the sanctuary. Now that's an amazing prayer. But verse 20 says, the Lord heard Hezekiah and healed the people. In other words, the Lord extended grace He sanctified the people, even though they had not followed the letter of the law. From a ritual perspective, they had not done what was required. But the Lord heard the heart of Hezekiah. He saw the hearts of the people coming to celebrate Passover. He saw the children of Jacob gathering together after hundreds of years in Jerusalem and worshiping him. And so God's grace was poured out in this Old Testament example in an amazing way. You know, some people, friends, don't believe that God showed grace in the Old Testament. The grace is a New Testament concept exclusively, but it's just simply not true. Here, both Israel and Judah were celebrating um, God's goodness, and they had not followed the letter of the law, and yet grace was extended, and the Bible says God healed them. In other words, he gave them a pass. He gave them spiritually a pass. He sanctified them. 
So the Passover was wonderful. They celebrated, uh, verse 21, the Israelites who were present celebrated the festival of unleavened bread and Passover for seven days with great rejoicing. And then um, uh, it was so good, verse 23, the whole assembly then agreed to celebrate the festival seven more days. So for another seven days, they celebrated Passover. Once again, friends, this was not exactly kosher. Forgive me for using that, no um, disrespect intended. But you don't celebrate Passover for 14 days. You celebrate Passover for seven or eight days, including Festival of Unleavened Bread and Festival of First Fruits. But in this case, they were so caught up in the worship of God, this, this lavish worship, that they doubled it. They, they exceeded the time that was normally allotted for it. And I believe heaven smiled. Once again, the grace of God was on all of this. And uh, the Bible says there was great joy in Jerusalem. For since the days of Solomon, son of King David, there had been nothing like this in Jerusalem. The priests and the Levites stood to bless the people, and God heard them. For their prayers reached heaven, his holy dwelling place. So a marvelous, marvelous, victorious chapter. And we'll have more on Hezekiah in the chapters to come. But God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your grace on these people who assembled for this magnificent Passover. Lord, we thank you for your grace on Israel. We thank you for your grace on Judah. We thank you for your grace on Hezekiah. We thank you for your grace in our lives. Lord, so many times we're not... Um, holy in our own actions. But by your grace, you sanctify us. By your grace, you heal us. By the blood of Jesus, we are made as if we're sinless, as often as is necessary by faith. And so, Lord, we thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.